Hi, I'm Simon Jacob. This presentation is entitled Combined Inductor and Current Sensor. There are some relevant videos to this presentation. One is the current sensing by whole effect. The other one is approximate and exact air gap effect in ferrite core inductors. I'm going to put the link of these videos in the page of the YouTube video that you are now watching. There is a need in power conversion systems like here in a buck converter to measure current. This could be for protection or could be for control. So here we have a resistive sensor, a resistor, which the current is passing through it and then we are feeding it to the controller. Usually the current is associated with an inductor. Here we have another case. This is a different method. Here the current is measured by actually measuring the voltage drop on the internal resistance of the inductor by this uh, network and as it turns out if you choose correctly the resistor and capacitor you have a replica of the current and this would be by the voltage across this capacitor which is now fed to the controller there is another method of course to measure current heavy current you can measure with a so-called concentrator it's a ferrite toroid or core with a gap. You put the sensor, which is the whole effect sensor, in the gap and this uh, actually gives you some concentration of the field and therefore you can get a fairly high signal out and here we have both the sensor and an amplifier. If the current is small then it may not be sufficient to get the magnetic field out of one wire so you can have actually a winding here, you're passing the current through it, this is a sensor by Honeywell, and passing the current through it will generate a magnetic field here, which you sense it by this sensor, which is again a whole effect sensor. So this is very well known, and it has been used, and is being used quite a bit. But now comes this patent, it's an invention, and the patent date is 2002, so actually it expired already. And what it is, it looks the same thing like we have seen before. However, the idea here is very clever. It's not a sensor, but it is the inductor itself. So here we have an inductor, and in power inductors you do need a gap if it is a ferrite core, if it's not a iron powder. And if you have a gap, you can put a sensor in this gap. This is the inductor, that's not a sensor. So you now getting for free, so to speak, the whole concentration of the field into the sensor and thereby you get the actually a measure of the current in the inductor. So this will be a sort of a direct measure of the current, isolated and without actually adding anything except for the sensor itself and you got already the gap. Of course there is a construction here, mechanical construction. So this is very clever. I haven't seen any application that actually used this idea. So in the following, I'm going to sort of discuss the features of this uh, approach and the limitation and see how it actually works. So you can do it with a U-core as it's shown here, but you can actually do it also with an E-core. In this case, you'll have to put the sensor here if the gap is in, if the gap is in inside. This will be a little bit awkward because you have to have the uh, lines, uh, the wires coming out of the sensor. Actually, you can actually drill a hole here or take the wires out. It will be easier if you put the sensor here, if you have the gap on the two sides. But this we don't like very much because we have here radiation of the magnetic field. However, it can be worked out, I think, even with this or using a U-core. Uh, so what is really behind this method. So the idea is that when you have a current, there'll be a magnetic flux building up within the ferrite. The flux is the same here and here. I am neglecting the fringe effect. I'll talk about it a little bit later. And B will be mu H. Mu here, this is the vacuum and this is the relative permeability. This is the permeability of the whole structure. We'll talk about it in a minute. And therefore, B, if you express H as Ni over Le, Le will be like the magnetic path length, then we see that B is proportional to I. Very simple. Now, commercial 
sensor, Hall effect sensor, are producing a voltage which is proportional to B, to the magnetic flux density, and a typical constant of such a sensor will be, say, like 10 millivolt per millitesla. So even for a 100 millitesla, which is kind of a normal magnetic flux density in a inductor, you'll get one volt, which is very nice. So let's dive a little bit deeper in what is going on. We have n times i here, ampere turns. We have a magnetic field here and a magnetic field here, which are different. B is the same, but the magnetic fields are different. And here is the magnetic flux density. This is now the relative permeability of the ferrite. And uh, B also can be expressed as mu sub zero times AG, which is the magnetic field here in the gap. I can walk it out and I get that the magnetic field in the gap is this expression. And then by multiplying the field by the permeability, I'm getting the magnetic flux density. So what we see here is that the magnetic flux density in this structure is a function of the permeability of the ferrite, this is vacuum permeability, it's a constant, and sub i, and then we have the length of the ferrite and the length of the gap. Now, if mu sub r is very high, very large, which it is, because they say in ferrite it's about, you see, it's a 2000, this is the mu sub r for ferrite, for 3F3, which is the, the local derivative of the BH curve at a given H. This is H in amp per meter. So if mu sub r is indeed very large, so this term is much larger than this, and then we get a high B. We'll see it in a minute in a more detailed form. On the other hand, if now H, B, and H are increasing, mu r is decreasing, then B becomes smaller and smaller. So let's look at the details of it. So here's the expression here, and what I'm saying is that if the permeability is large, that we are at a low Ni, then this term is much larger than this, and this drops out, and what we get here is B. You have to mul multiply this by mu sub zero. So B is mu sub zero Ni over Lg. Lg being a small number, it's a gap, B is large. But if mu now becomes smaller, mu sub, sub r approaching say one, this is saturation of the core, then this would be one. And then we're going back for B, multiply it again by mu sub zero, we're going to this expression, L sub F, the length of the ferrite is much larger than the gap. Here we see actually the concentration or amplification of the core. That is, rather than having this magnetic flux density, we sort of amplify it to this value, Lg being a much smaller number than these two, and therefore we get here a concentration of the field, and we know that Hg is very large as compared to Hf. You can see it here. In when mu r is large, it's mu r times larger. So if like mu r is 2000, then the magnetic field in the air gap is much larger than the magnetic field in the ferrite. So this is well known. Obviously, as the current goes up, and we are losing mu sub r due to the partial saturation and then saturation of the core, then the sensitivity is going to go down. But at the same time, of course, the inductance is going down and then the inductor is actually useless because we are not going to work with an inductor when it is within saturation. So over the current which is operational, this sensor should work okay and we'll see it later on. There's another issue here, however, in that all the expressions that I've shown are really approximate because I have assumed that B is passing through the ferrite and even if the core is going into saturation, 
it is going uh, this way, but in fact, as the core is going into saturation, the permeability, relative permeability of the ferrite is dropping, and therefore you'll have now the magnetic flick de density going also this way, like a stray field here, and of course all the uh, equations that I've wrote are incorrect, but again, this is not an area that I'm going to work at. So here is some calculation for a given core. Here is a toroid, which basically is without a gap, and we have put a gap on it, and then we have 20 turns, and the gap is, uh, the gap is 1.2 millimeters. And here what we see is the following. We see that the inductance stays constant, until we reach the point that the permeability of the core is starting to drop, then the inductance is going down. Now here we see the actually magnetic flux density. This is what the sensor will be sensing if the sensor will be here. And again, you see that indeed in the area where the inductance is still about constant, it is even linear, even at higher current, because when the relative permeability drops a little bit, then still it works pretty good, but if the permeability really drops a lot, then we are losing the gain. So the point is that over the, the range of current that you'll be using this inductor, you'll get a pretty good measure of the current by measuring B in the gap. So what are the conclusions of this uh, presentation? We see that a combined inductor sensor is really viable. It can be done and it, it should give fairly nice result. A U core is probably better, it's more compatible uh, than E core because there is a question wh where is the optimal place for the gap. In the U core we put it on the side which also is not of course uh, desirable. And then there is the question of the bandwidth. Now the whole sensor have a typical bandwidth of say 200 kilohertz. In many applications it could be okay, but if uh, the switching frequency is very high and if you use it for say peak current mode, it may not be good enough. So this could be a real limitation if the switching frequency is high. So this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.